So welcome today to Sitka's continuing training webinar, Those Flummoxing Fixed Fields. Today we're going to look at how to add and edit values to the fixed fields in Evergreen and what happens when the fields are incorrectly coded or ignored. We're going to do this by answering three questions. What are fixed fields? What does Evergreen do with them? And how do you correct them in Evergreen? And I'm just going to switch us over to Evergreen now. Actually, I'm going to switch us over to the Library of Congress Mark Standards to start with. <clears throat> so fixed fields are mark fields that are of a fixed length. Um, so they always contain the same number of characters, and each character position has a specific meaning. The four fixed fields are the leader, which is the very first field of any mark record, the 006, the 007, and the 008 fields, uh, which are three of the control fields. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at uh, the leader, and we can come in here in the mark standards to the page specifically on the leader, <laughs> as well as the uh, 007 and the 008. Um, and the mark standards have additional information for those fields as well. All records have to contain a leader or an 008. Um, mark, field, mark records that are missing either a leader or an 008 field will cause problems in Evergreen. Um, some records should also have an 007 or an 006 and an 007. And the coding used in the fixed fields and its meaning depends on the type of item. So if we go into <clears throat> the page for the 008 here, you can see that depending on the type of material you're cataloging, the character position's meaning changes. Um, and I uh, definitely encourage you to refer back to the MARC standards um, if you have questions about particular um, values or uh, fields. So what does Evergreen do with these fields and the information that you put into them? So Evergreen takes that information um, and it uses it in multiple ways. Most of the search filters rely on characters in the fixed length fields. So if we come here to uh, the Maple Public Library uh, public catalog, you can see with our search fields here, we have format, language, audience, literary form, and shelving location. Shelving location doesn't use the fixed field. It's actually looking at your shelving locations. Uh, but the literary form is looking at character 33 of the 008 field. The audience filter is looking at character 22 of the 008 field. The language filter is looking at characters 35 to 37 of the 008 field. And the format filter actually looks at a combination of fields from <clears throat> the leader, the 007 and 008. Um, <clears throat> and if we come into uh, the documentation that we have for Sitka, uh, we do have that information uh, with the uh, characters that the different search fields rely on. Um, listed here. As well, we have a table which shows you exactly which characters the different uh, formats are looking at to decide whether or not to include records um, in your search. Uh, <clears throat> the search uh, format icons also rely on the leader, the 007, and the 008 characters. Um, and there's a second table which looks at uh, which characters are used for the different format icons to display. So if the fixed fields aren't coded correctly, the format icons are going to be wrong, potentially, and your expected resources aren't going to be included in your search results. So what can you do when a record isn't showing the correct icon or showing up in your results? You can edit the fixed fields in Evergreen. As with editing any MARC records, you do want to make sure that you're not changing what the record describes, you're simply correcting incorrect information, or you're adding additional information that was missing. And before we go into Evergreen and start taking a look at any records, are there any questions?
Okay, so we're going to come into Evergreen. I've got my example record here turning red, which is a DVD. Um, fixed fields can be edited either using the flat text editor or the enhanced mark editor. So if we come to the mark edit tab, we have both the enhanced mark editor tab and the flat text editor. And we're going to start by talking about the flat text editor. So with the flat text editor, you can edit the fields directly. And this means for the fixed length fields, you have to count your characters very carefully to make sure you're entering the value in the right place. Um, you always start a field in the fix, uh, flat text editor with an equal sign, followed by the three character designation for the field, um, and then a space and the field starts for those fixed length uh, fields. You'll notice other fields do have uh, two spaces for the indicators, um, followed by subfields. With the fixed length fields like the 008, um, a really important thing to remember is that the first character isn't one, it's zero. So as you're counting your spaces, you need to count that first one as zero. Um, you need to put in backslashes to represent spaces. And the, can, uh, the characters are positionally defined so you do need to enter all your characters and spaces, not just the ones that are important to you. Um, because if you don't include the correct number of spaces, your uh, character values are gonna end up in a different character position uh, than you intended. And Evergreen uh, won't know what to, or will do different things with it because it thinks it's a different um, character position. Now coming over to the enhanced mark editor, um, it has some handy built-in features uh, to make editing the fixed fields easier. At the top here, we have the leader and 008 field grid, which makes it really easy to update a single character value without having to count. Um, you can see there's uh, different abbreviations for what these characters are, and you'll find in the Sitka's Evergreen documentation, we have a a uh, table which shows what all of those abbreviations actually mean and which fields and characters they refer to. Um, and this, as well as um, any other uh, uh, resources that I'm showing today, are going to be included uh, in the handout. Uh, so if we take a look here, we can see that the first uh, character box we have here is type. And if we come back to that list and scroll down and it is uh, done alphabetically, we can see that type is the leader character 06, which is type of record. And if we come back into uh, the record here, um, we can see that this is currently coded as G. If I right click in the field here, it's actually going to give me a list of all the possible values based on the Mark 21 standard. So I can see that G is projected medium. Um, most of the fields will show you the, these kind of lists when you right click. Um, there are a few fields where this doesn't happen. Um, for example, uh, the TMAT, which is type of visual material, um, doesn't include the list. So you'd need to go back to the mark standards to see what the possible values are for that one. Um, The characters that display in the grid will change based on the type of material. Um, so what we're looking at right now is a record for a DVD. And if we come over here to look at a record for a book, you can see that the grid is a little different. There's some different characters. For example, now we have a literary form as well as index, which we weren't seeing. We don't have that type of visual material field. Um, because those fields don't apply, or the type of visual material uh, field doesn't apply to uh, books, and the literary form and index doesn't apply to DVDs. <clears throat> uh, if we come back to uh, my first example here, uh, the grid does the leader in the 008, but oftentimes you'll also need to add or edit 007 fields. And the Enhanced Mark Editor has the Physical Characteristics Wizard to help you with the 007. 
So if your record has an 007, uh, you can see we have a little icon here. So if we click on this icon, it opens up the physical characteristics wizard. Um, the record, if the record doesn't include an 007, and it should, you can add an 007, and then that icon appears so you can pull up the physical characteristics wizard. Um, and we're going to uh, go through the physical characteristic wizard uh, with a different example in a moment here. So I'm just going to hit cancel on that. Uh, now, before we look at examples of how to correct um, fixed field coding, um, are there any questions about the enhanced mark editor or the flat text editor? Okay, hearing and seeing no questions, we're going to switch to uh, my first example here, which is a record for Jurassic Park. And if we look at the icon, you can see it's currently showing his book. But if we look at the edition here, we can see it's saying collector's edition widescreen. So it's a bit of a hint that this is probably not actually the book Jurassic Park. If we take a look at the record, we can see that in the 245, it's telling us it's a video recording. In the 300, it's telling us that it's a video disc based on the novel. Um, so this isn't the novel, this is the DVD. So something's wrong because Evergreen uh, is displaying that book icon. <clears throat> so looking at the fixed field, there's a couple of things that we can see. First of all, the type of the record is currently coded as A. And if I right click there, you can see A is language material. So Evergreen is being told that this is language material, not a projected medium. So we're going to change that to G for projected medium. The other thing we notice is that this record doesn't have an 007 field. So there's no field to tell it, uh, to tell Evergreen the additional information about the DVD. So I'm going to click into the 008 field and then right click, and I have the option to add an 007. So I'm going to add that 007. And as you can see, I've got a blank field now with that icon to open the physical characteristics wizard. So I'm going to open that physical characteristics wizard. Now, uh, the physical characteristics wizard includes drop downs for each value. So we'll go through and we'll create that 007. Um, I do have the original 007 from this record. Um, so uh, if you do have questions about these values, again, I refer you back uh, to the MARC standards, um, which has additional information about uh, these fields and how to code them. So we're going to choose V for video recording here, and then do next. SMD is going to be video disc. The color is going to be multicolored. The video recording format is going to be DVD. And you can see it's building my 007 above um, for me. The sound is on the medium. The medium for sound is video disc. And the dimensions are other. And the configuration of the playback channel is multi-channel, surround, or quadraphonic. So I've now entered all of the characters for my 007. I'm going to click Apply. And my record now has an 007. Now, before I'll see that icon changed, I do need to hit Save. So I'm going to hit Save. And this is where we run into a bug that Evergreen currently has. So you can see the icon has correctly updated to be DVD, but if we look at the grid, it's still showing the grid that's used for book. So if you are making changes to the type field or the bibliographic level, which is this field here, once you save your record, you actually wanna open it up again in a new tab. So I'm gonna retrieve bib record by ID um, and open that up in a new tab. And this database ID is what you want to use for that. So I'm just copying, pasting that in. 
opening that up in a new tab, which clears um, what's being cached currently. And you can see that this grid is now showing the correct one uh, with the values for a uh, projected medium. Uh, we have reported this bug to the Evergreen community, um, and we are monitoring the bug, uh, looking uh, for when a fix is available. Now that this record has the DVD icon, we've added that 007. Um, the record is also now going to appear in searches that use the format filter um, for video or uh, uh, DVD. Coming to the next example here, uh, we have a discovery of witches. It's showing as video. From the item that's attached, we can tell it looks like it's actually a DVD. Um, so we want that DVD icon to display as well. If we go to Mark Edit and take a look at that enhanced Mark Editor, this time we can see that the type is already set as G, so that's correct. But we can see that there isn't an 007. So Evergreen is giving it the icon of video because it knows it's a video recording. But because that 007 is missing, Evergreen doesn't know what type of video recording it is. So again, we'll click into the 008 with the right click, click Add 007, open up that physical characteristics wizard again, and it's actually going to be the exact same characters as the uh, Jurassic Park one. So we go through, we select our characters, um, and this VDVD is one of the characters that Evergreen is specifically looking at for that format icon. We've got our 007 completed. I'll click apply and save changes. And you can see that the icon has now updated to be DVD. Next, we have the Duros in Cor Corfu. And we can see that this one is showing as a VHS. Um, I don't actually know, I, I don't actually think this uh, would have ever come out on VHS. Um, so we can see again that the item attached to this record is a DVD. If we come into the mark record and take a look, Again, we can see it's two video discs. It's coded as a two-dimensional moving image. Uh, everything in this record says that this is a, um, a DVD as opposed to a VHS. So we've got that type G correctly coded. And this one does have an 007. But obviously, something's not quite right in that 007. So I'm going to open up the physical characteristics wizard. Now, um, as you go through the characteristics wizard, if you change a value, the values after are also going to be cleared and need to be added again, because sometimes changing that value will change what would come after. Um, so if you think that you just have one value that's wrong, a good idea is just to write down what the 007 is before you make any changes so you can refer back to what values um, had already been used for other characters. So for this one, the first uh, character is video recording, which is correct. Video disc is also correct. It's multicolored. But here we have that video recording format, and it's not a VHS. So we're going to change that to DVD. You can see that clears the rest of the 007. So I'll go through and I will uh, recode the end of that 007. And then I'll apply that and save my record. And now we have that DVD icon instead of VHS. The final uh, video recording record that we're going to look at here 
um, is a little different. Uh, we have Blu-ray, DVD, and book all showing as icons. And that's probably not correct. If we come into the MARC record, we can see that uh, the type is code is A, which for language material. We have two 007s. So we need to look at the record and see what it actually is describing. So looking at the record, we can see it says it's two video discs. Um, we can also see in the 500 field in the notes that it's talking about what is on the Blu-ray and uh, what is on the DVD. So this is a item that is both, uh, both contains a DVD and a Blu-ray, um, but it's not a book. So we're going to come back up. We're going to change that type to G for projected medium. Um, and we're actually going to leave both 007s because this second 007 with the um, V as the fourth character is describing the DVD. And the first 007 with S as the fourth character is describing the Blu-ray. So if I save my changes, we now have that book icon gone, but the DVD and the Blu-ray icons are both remaining because they are correct. And uh, each of those 007s is telling Evergreen, include this icon and include this icon. <clears throat> um, these are just a few ways that DVD records can be incorrectly coded, causing that incorrect format icon to display. You'll see other types of items with similar incorrect coding. If you come across records like these, we do encourage you to correct the coding if you feel comfortable doing so and are confident that the changes you are going to make are correct for the item. Always double check to make sure that the change you're making matches the rest of the record. For example, don't update that character 4 of the 007 to be V for DVD if the 300 field is saying that this is a video cassette. Um, in that case, if your item is a DVD, you should be bringing in a DVD record, either uh, finding the one in the catalog or importing one if there isn't one already in the catalog. Uh, next, we're going to move on to taking a look at uh, uh, some publication uh, year issues, um, unless there's any questions about the changes that we've made uh, with DVD. Okay, so taking us over to uh, the public catalog, um, I pre-did the search to make sure it was gonna uh, show my example correctly. So what we have here is a search for the Stephanie Plum novels by Janet Ivanovich. And publication year can be a good tip off when something isn't right with the fixed fields. So I've sorted my records from newest to oldest, but if I take a look, I can see based on the publication information that what is showing is the newest record is published in 2006, followed by one published in 2019. So something is uh, not right here. And as we go through, we can see um, the years do decrease. We are getting into older records. And on that second page, which the trading server is just going to take a moment to load, um, at the very end here, we've got uh, an item published in 2012, but we can see that the one that comes before it is 1994. So there's something going on here because we've got an item showing as the newest, which isn't the newest, and an item showing as the oldest, which isn't the oldest. So if we come into Evergreen to take a look at the records, this is the one that was showing as the oldest. If we come into the Mark Editor and go take a look at that 260 field, we can see it's got a copyright of 2012. But Evergreen doesn't use the 260 or 264 subfield C for the publication year when it's doing the sorting or when it's um, filtering by publication year in the search. It actually uses this date one field, which is part of the 008. And in this case, the date one field is blank. Um, records with 
uh, no information in that date one field will always show at the very end of the sort, whether you sort newest to oldest or old, oldest to new it, newest, this record will always be the last one. So we need to fix this by putting in the date. So we've got our publication date of 2012. So we'll enter that in and click save. And Evergreen now knows how to sort that one properly. If we come to the other record we were looking at, 12 sharp with the publication date of 20, uh, or sorry, 2006. If we take a look in the mark edit, again, we're seeing in the 260 that uh, 2006. But if we look in the uh, leader in uh, 008 grid, we can see that the date is currently 2026, um, which is probably a pretty obvious typo since we haven't reached 2026 yet. So we will fix that one, put it to 20, uh, 2006, and save our changes. Now, if you do this search right away on the same browser, you probably won't see the changes yet because there is some caching going on. Um, but if you were do this, to do the same search again later or on a different browser, you would see them now sort in the expected order. Um, as well, if we take a look at the search here, we're coming into the staff catalog. Um, we're gonna do a search using the formats uh, filter. So I'm gonna do a search for Janet Ivanovich. I'm gonna tell it I want that to be an author search. And I'm looking for audiobooks. So I'm going to choose all audiobooks here. And I don't want it to include electronic resources because the patron in front of me wants an audiobook of one of Jana Devanovich's books. So I'm going to now hit search. And I don't get any records, which I know is weird because I know that we have Jana Devanovich audiobooks on the shelf. Um, so I'm going to try a bit of a different search. I'm going to put my formats back to all formats. And using the three dots here, I'm going to expand to see the additional filters. And I'm going to tell it I want it to give me adult uh, anything in the adult fiction on CD shelving location where the author is Ivanovich. So I'm going to hit search there. And this time I get two results, which is more what I expected to see. But now I need to figure out why these didn't come up when I searched for audiobooks. Um, because I can see from the physical description that's displaying that these look like they are audiobooks. You know, seven sound discs. This one has three sound discs. And also, in the case of these records, the cover art uh, strongly indicates that these are audiobooks. So if I come into one of these records and go into Mark Edit, I can see in the enhanced mark editor that the type is A for language material. And if I right click there, I can see that actually I should be using I for non-musical sound recording. So I'm gonna make that change. I can see we've got the book icon. Once I hit save here, that updates to CD audiobook. So now that item will uh, display the correct format. And it will also show up in searches when I'm searching for the format audiobook. Um, and that's the, the same issue that that other audiobook has as well. So we'd go through and we'd correct that one as well. So it gets returned in the search results. Um, as I mentioned before, this format filter isn't the only one that depends on the fixed fields. The language, audience, literary form, and the publication year all depend on characters in those fixed fields. And how accurate your search results are using those filters really is going to depend on whether or not those characters have been coded properly, or as we've seen, whether they've been coded at all. If we do a title search here, uh, for rabbit, and we're going to do uh, the audience juvenile and do a search. Ah, 
and I'm going to take off my adult fiction on CD uh, shelving location filter. So let's do that search again. You can see I have a number of results, but sometimes you can have some surprising results because I picked uh, the, the filter for juvenile, which looks at character J in position 22 of the 008. So records coded as E for adult will not display, but if we've got a record that's incorrectly coded, we are gonna see unexpected results, such as Tom Clancy's Red Rabbit. Um, so if we go into that one and go into the mark edit, we can see the audience is coded as J, probably not what was intended. So from the drop down me or pop-up menu, we'll choose adult because we don't want that showing up with all the picture books. So we'll hit save changes. And the Tom Clancy will now no longer be included in those search results for the search we just did. If you're doing original cataloging, you are going to notice that some values for the leader and control fields are already filled in for you in the templates. So I'm going to take us to cataloging and create new mark record. And you've got the different um, templates to start from. So for instance, if we go into the book one and load that, you'll see that it automatically comes coded with that A for language material. And it's got some very basic coding in the 008. <clears throat> um, it, the 008 really is just there as a placeholder so that when you catalog, you can add the additional uh, information that is correct for your item. Um, the first six characters are actually the date on which the record was created, the item was cataloged. Um, for the 008 to appear in the template, we had to put a value in. Um, so the very first thing you should do when doing original cataloging is update that to actually be the current date. So uh, the form is year, year, month, month, day, day. So for say, that would be 2304. 20. So now we have that actually coded correctly. Um, and we can go through, we can put in additional information relevant to what we're cataloging. So if we have audience information we want to include, we can put that in. We can include literary form. So we can say that this is uh, fiction. We put in whatever the publication date is, um, the country of publication. and we'll just choose British Columbia for this one. And if this isn't a work in English, do make sure that you pick the correct language uh, from the list. <clears throat> now, if we go back to uh, that first page for create a new mark record and go into a different template such as uh, the video template, you'll see that it is uh, a bit of a different look because we've got it coded as G. So we've got the different uh, character positions uh, displaying here. And it has an 007. Um, it has been coded for DVD. So the V is in that fourth character. So if you're using the video template to code or to catalog something that isn't a DVD, make sure you go in and you adjust that 007 because it really is just there as a placeholder, um, which needs to be checked and updated as you are uh, cataloging. Um, as you go through at the very least, when you're doing your cataloging, you do wanna make sure you're filling in that date one field. Um, so the publication date sort works properly and really any other fields or characters that are gonna be relevant to your formats icon and the applicable search filters. The more information you include in the 008, 007 and leader, the better, um, but at the very least, um, try to get the information that's gonna affect those um, filters included. And don't forget when you go in and you change a B to a V so that the DVD format icon correctly displays, 
or you add a value for literary format, it's not just your patrons and library staff that are benefiting, but the patrons and library staff at every library that has an item attached to that record or might attach one in the future. Um, and this is also why you need to be certain when you're updating these fields that you're entering the correct information because your change could affect more than 100 libraries. Uh, we've recently updated our documentation to include more resources for working with the fixed fields, um, but the definitive resource always is the MARC 21 standards, um, which is linked to throughout our documentation and on the handout that you'll get this afternoon. It shows you all of the characters, the possible values, and explains which character, or sorry, what, uh, what each character is for those fixed fields. Um, and the MARC 21 standards are also available in French. Um, and those are linked uh, in our documentation as well. Uh, and that brings us to the end of today's session on uh, fixed fields. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me today. <laughs>